Hello everyone, Gary Rosen here, and welcome to the third installment of Carlson Power Tools in under 10 minutes. Hope you're all doing well. I appreciate everyone who's uh, viewed the first couple installments. I hope they were helpful. However, I did notice on the last one that Doug Aubert's video got a couple hundred more views than mine, and that made me saucy as a cracky. So hopefully we'll improve on that this time. So, sometimes you need small power tools instead of large power tools, and that's what the theme is this month. I needed to fix my glasses a few weeks ago, so I got this guy, you know, a little sun, uh, eyeglass uh, repair kit thing, and I was trying to work with that. Wound up with this instead. You can hear that. Um, much better solution, awesome little power tool different bits, uh, great way to go. So that's the power tool for this month. This, by the way, is a sonic screwdriver, which is a super power tool, um, but of a different kind. So we'll cover that some other time. But anyway, I hope this helps. Um, look at some interesting power, little power tools, and see if those will help you in your day-to-day -day production. Okay, here we go. Okay, going to be moving quickly to get as many of these in as I can in about eight minutes. I've got seven on my list. First up, Drawing Inspector. Couldn't really work without it. Under Inquiry, Drawing Inspector, you press it to turn it on or off. When it's on, you right-click. gives you the choices that you can see on your cursor when you hover over objects in your screen. Layer name and elevation is what's set right now. I hover over an object. I don't have to do list or ID or anything. I just hover and it shows me the elevation of the object, and it shows me the layer that it's on. If I right-click and turn on angle distance, I can hover over a property line, I can get the bearing and distance on it, I can check it against the label, etc. Super powerful tool, Drawing Inspector. I'll turn it back off real quick. Okay, next up, Layer Isolate. Let's say I just want to look at these setbacks in the property lines. So I say View, Layer Isolate, Isolate Layers, I pick one of these, one of these, press enter, it isolates those layers. That's all I see. I can manipulate, I could do other commands if I wanted to, you know, take these guys if I, you know, that would be wrong. But anyway, just you can actually do work. And then when you're done, you don't undo or anything else. You just go back to layer, restore, and it restores your layers to the way they were before you did the isolate. So if you had layers on or off before you started, It'll put them back the way they were. It doesn't just turn everything on. Layer isolate and layer restore. Okay, here's a great one. I zoom extents and I get this. How many times have you done this? Oh, darn. Okay, so we have a new command to help you. Under view, we say zoom and we say zoom most. And it says most or outliers. And I say most. And it zooms in here and says here's most of your stuff. Okay, if I run it again and I say I want to see the outliers, it zooms in and says, ouch, and that was off a million miles in space. If I erase that and say zoom extents, I'm back here. Okay, zoom most. Awesome new command. Okay, erase by layer. Say I want to get rid of the uh, contours, for instance. I say edit, erase by layer. Okay, and I'm going to clear this out and say select from screen, and I'll pick a contour and a contour label as an example. It shows me the layers. I say OK, and it erases everything on those layers. Doesn't delete them, doesn't purge them, just scrubs them clean, however many layers you want to do. Erase by layer. Here's a good one. Curve calculator. Under draw, we say arc, and we say calculate a curve. Curve calculator. Comes up on the side. I say I need a curve with a 50-foot radius and a chord length of uh, 67 and it calculates the curve. Or maybe I know the arc length that I needed for an arc length of 70, it calculates. So whatever you put in, it recalculates. You can do lots of options here. Super powerful command, just a curve calculator built into the software. Pretty awesome. Here's the next one, inverse, I for inverse. And it says, what number do you want to inverse from? So I start with, uh, let's say, 369. Okay, and it says, okay, that's right here. So I can find points instantly just by inversing with a point number. Plus, it confirms that the, where the point is on the screen is where it thinks it is in the CRD file. 
So I can inverse from there to 363. And of course, it gives me the bearing and distance and the uh, horizontal and vertical uh, slope distance and everything. So inverse command, super powerful. Here's another power tool for you. Um, switch to this drawing. Now, this one's in civil. It's called the, the surface inspector. So I say surface, and I say surface inspector, and I load up my two surfaces. I come here and I pick my surface. There's the sur first surface I want to use. Here's the second surface I want to use, original ground, and this little pad that I built. And then I say I want to show the difference. I want to use this marker. I want this information here. I say OK. And as I hover over the screen, it shows me the two surfaces, and it shows me the difference between them. Looks like I have O snap here. Let's get that off. Take off that O snap. Okay, there we go. So now it shows me the two. It shows me the difference between the two as I roll around on the screen. And then when I want to, if I want to, I pick and it just labels. There's the two L two surfaces, and there's the difference between them. Okay. So there's seven power tools. Not sure how much time we're up to. Oh, that's only four and a half minutes. Excellent. Okay. Well, we're going to do some more then. We'll be right back. Okay. Here's a good one that I use all the time. Hopefully, it'll be helpful to you too. In this drawing, all the points are on the same layer. So if I go up here to layer P points or PNTS, what's it set to? Points. And I freeze it all the points go away. Okay, that works, and I can do that. There's situations where I might want that to be the case. But in other cases, I want to isolate points by their description and look at, for instance, let's say all the stone wall shots or something like that. Now, obviously, field to finish is going to be a great way to go, and we'll cover that sometime in the future. There's a lot of material out there about field to finish, and that'd be a great way to go. But there is a shortcut that's kind of halfway there. If I say draw locate, and I say on here, I want to go layer by description, and I use PT underscore. When I draw all the points, all the points are redrawn in the drawing. But what's happened is a whole set of layers has been created based on the descriptions. Okay, so now all the, each different description is creating a layer and putting the points on there. That could be pretty handy, but it could all be a little bit overwhelming at first. So here's what we do. We go into our layer control. In IntelliCAD, it's this Properties Explorer. and But we look at the layers, and we come in here and we make a new filter. Okay, so we say New Filter, and we come in here and we say PT for the name of it, whatever you want to call it. And the key is it's PT, PT underscore star. We press Enter, and it f makes a layer of all the, it makes a set, a filter, of all of the layers that start with PT underscore. And it lists them here as what's called a layer filter. I can now right click and say visibility and say frozen. And I can fr freeze all those layers in one sync. Now they're a group of layers based on their name. Now I can come in here for instance and say, okay, stone wall, thaw. Here's stone wall end, that, I need that too. Top of stone ret wall, let's do that one too. Top of stone ret wall end, we'll do that one too. Okay, and now you can see that I can very quickly start working with just those shots so it's much easier to see where these things are. Okay, so working with layer filters, draw, uh, draw properties, uh, uh, draw locate using that, that uh, uh, prefix, and then working with the layer filter to make a group of them, and then, and then using that, again, in the layer control dialog, I can go to this and I can right click and say visibility, on, off, frozen, thawed, whatever. I can say thaw them all and bring all the points back on or whatever I want to do. Pretty handy, and hopefully that will be another power tool for you to help uh, make your work a little bit easier. Okay, 45 seconds. Here we go. This drawing has a nice layout ready, okay? This drawing does not, has nothing, has this thing, okay? So what do we do? We go to our layer control in IntelliCAD. Now, this is IntelliCAD. We have both drawings listed. We go to the layouts, and we take this 1117, and we drag it and drop it into the other drawing. Close this dialog, go to the other drawing, and lo and behold, there's the layout ready to go. Unbelievable. Okay. Thanks a lot. See you next month.